Providence, Rhode Island, where he started the QTK breakings. Go ahead, do some moves. Hey everybody, we're back. It's been a while. I've been on some cool adventures and honestly today I'm really excited to share with you probably one of my most important and favorite testimonies and really something that has marked my life. I hope today you guys are super encouraged and honestly I believe it's 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 going to provide breakthrough for other people. Today you're going to hear more of my testimony and honestly a little bit of a sermonette and, a, and, and really my story of how I've come through and really been fathered by our father um, how the Lord has been so faithful to me and has built such a deep fathership in my life so my parents had me at a really young age you know 17 and 16 years old and so my mom was 16 my dad was 17 they didn't know what they were doing what they were getting into and shortly after I was born um, you know my dad actually left the picture and so he was running the streets. He thought he was the next Scarface. He was stealing cars, joining gangs, getting into all kinds of stuff. And I didn't really know much about my dad growing up. And when I was six years old, my stepfather actually came into the picture and raised me, really. And he's the one who taught me break dance and even a passion a lot for the Lord and the stuff that I did early in my years when I was just growing up and, and learning about God. And so as this was happening, my dad was kind of running all over the place and he wasn't involved in my life. He ended up having several other kids and he wasn't really involved in their life either. And he was just, to me, looking at it now, a fatherless son just running around. And even though he was doing those things and he could have, in his mind, probably thought, I've abandoned my children or I've abandoned family um, very early on, I believe, in those stages, God was looking at him seeing that. There's my son. There's someone that I'm going to father. But, it, you know, it, it would become a long process. And so my dad grew up without his biological dad. And he ended up getting into the system. He got into foster care for a while. He was just fatherless. And, you know, at the same time, my stepfather, who actually came into the picture and raised me, also didn't have a father growing up. He didn't meet his dad until his early 20s. Um, and so, you know, I'm... Just this whole time, I'm, I'm being brought into a generation of, of fatherless men. And, you know, God saw that early and knew that even though I had been growing up in this atmosphere, I believe the Lord it just was so faithful to say, hey, I'm going to father you. Growing up, I didn't really know my dad, my biological dad, and um, I didn't actually meet him until I was 15 years old. And so I got a phone call one day from my biological dad. He had found me. And he, he came and he actually visited me the first time I met my dad. He brought a thing of alcohol and like at 15, I got drunk with my dad. And, you know, I thought, wait, this is such a cool guy. And he said to me, oh, you're such a cool son. It's like, why would you never meet before, you know? And so we got drunk and partied it up. And I'm like, this is a cool guy. And he had a flip phone at that time, you know, with the camera on the front. So this is like original selfie, you know, back in the day. And so I thought that thing was flashy and he looked at me and he just gave it to me. He's like, here you go, son. And so he gave me a phone and, and that, you know, it was cool being in high school at 15 years old, walking around with the cool phone clip and the flip phone. And so he gave me that and then he went on his way and he actually had been living in Rhode Island. And so I ended up moving there with my dad. I left my mom behind. I left all that, my family, my stepfather who raised me. And I followed my dad for a little while. And that was a very tough time for me. I was really mad at God. I was mad at my family. I felt rejected. I felt abandoned. And if you hear this, the real cycle had begun at that time where I was following into my father's footsteps. And I didn't even know it. And so I started to get into to drugs and stuff like that. I started hanging with people that were a lot older than me, that influenced me a lot. Still to this day, I love them. They're my brothers. But at that time, everyone came from different backgrounds. They had people that were ex-gang members. One of my best friends had just got out of prison the first day I met him. And just so we were all coming from pretty broken backgrounds. And at this time, my dad, you know, was working a job. And he had quit his old lifestyle of kind of retired gangster. 
but I had got to hear all these stories of the person he used to be. And, you know, he, he lived that. Honestly, some of the stuff my dad experienced really haunted his life. And he lived a life of regret in a lot of ways. And that really influenced his alcoholism where he got really deep into just being an alcoholic. And, and that was a tough time because I had never been around that kind of environment, being raised up in the church. And so um, there was a lot of times where with my biological dad, we would get in arguments or fights or just things that was super violent and hurtful. And at the same time that that stuff was happening where the devil was trying to shift my perspective to just want to hate my dad or be angry at him, I also felt compassionate. I felt a caretaker to my dad. I felt like, man, I, I love this dude and I want to see him change. And that that's going into where we're going now. And, and really, my dad, my dad used to have this phrase uh, that he would say. It usually would be after a talk like, hey, you know, don't, don't, you know, quit school or don't get in trouble with the law and do the right thing. And he'd say, look, I'm the bad Ben and you're the good Ben. Both me and my dad have the same name. And so he would say that in the sense of, you know, I, I've done bad. I've done, let me be that guy, but you have a future, you know, be, be the good version of who we are. And I think he didn't know it back then, but even in saying that there was a, a heart of change for our family name, for who we are. And really spoke to me that, hey, I have the chance to change, not just me, but our whole family and, and, and the curses and the, the bitterness and all the things that have, have attached the baggage to our lives and a lot of the sin and a lot of the wrong things we did. And so he would always say that to me. And about two or three years into our relationship as I'm getting to know my dad, um, one day I just woke up and really it dawned on me where I had this thought, which really ended up becoming a promise to me, which was, you know, why can't we both be the good man? Why can't we both be good? And from that day on, honestly, that seed of hope became something that changed my life forever and ultimately grew in my dad. And my dad ended up changing too. And so it's just so beautiful to catch you guys up. So through this adventure, you know, when I'm 15, I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out who I am, trying to figure out who Father God is to me, meeting my, you know, biological dad and, and doing things with him for a bit. And then I actually left that and returned back to my home with my mom and my stepfather. And I wanted to get my life right. I ended up going to Bible school at Elam, and that just changed my life and wrecked me. I was there for a whole year, and the Lord just completely rebuilt me from the ground up. And he showed me sonship. He showed me how I can be fathered. As the Lord was restoring my relationship with him, he was also restoring my relationship with my dad. And so I was calling my dad all the time. And the, the one dad that before had abandoned me now was very active in my life. We would text each other or do phone calls every week. And he'd check up on me and I would tell him how I'm doing good. And as I was experiencing this new, just recharge, restoration, healing process, that started to really be poured out onto him. And I remember I'd just pray with him over the phone and I didn't even really know what I was doing and he, he didn't know either. And we would just kind of go with it and I would start to tell him, you know, God's going to help our family and God's going to change us and grow us. And all these promises just were coming into my life. After I did my one year there, it felt like the Lord was calling me to go. He said, you're ready now. I'm going to send you to the nations. And that's where this whole heart and this idea of switch to the culture came from, where, where my, the Lord kind of branded my vision in the heart that he said he'd send me to all these different cultures and I'd better use hip hop to better reach people. And the thing that, you know, I grew up in that could have been, detri you know, destroying even detrimental to, to my life would actually be a tool for his kingdom. And so I ended up going overseas and I kept in touch with my dad and, you know, things started just going awesome for me. And I remember in 2014, four years into my ministry, I was in Malaysia attending a Bible school for, for uh, in, in all Chinese. You know, at this point, I mean, my Chinese was okay, but I, I attended a, a completely Chinese seminary, which was crazy and very difficult. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. And I was on the phone with my dad just telling him how my week was going and something happened. That hope 
that seed of promise that I had way back then, that voice that kept telling me, we're both going to be the good men, was there. And at that moment, it was a six-hour phone call with my dad. And we just Skyped, and he just began to weep and tell me about a lot of stuff he regrets. And it was really like a confession, honestly, to me. And I told him, you know, God is listening. You don't have to confess to me, but it's God who forgives. It's God who forgives and forgets. It's God who can change you and restore you just like he did me. And so that night I prayed with my dad, you know, and he openly invited God to come into his life and try to help him out. You know, he looked at it like, hey, you know, look what my son is doing. I want this too. And so from that day on, I believe as he continued to, to fight and become who he is now, um, you know, he ended up actually having another son. Uh, six now now my brother's almost six years old. His name's Alex, and this is this is us going to meet him. It was so exciting. Hey, wait, why does why is what this up? your friend? Is this who? your friend? You don't know who I am. Who are you? Guess. Uh. Uh. What do I? Who do I look like? Look at us right here. Benji. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what's so. up? What's up, little bro? How you doing, man? You good? How you doing? He didn't realize who I was at first, and then he's like, oh, wait a minute. You guys are twins. You look alike. And so, yeah, he had Alex. And so that beautiful boy right there actually ended up becoming a promise to my dad. And my dad always says, you know, Alex is my, my karma. He's the person that has, you know, been put in my life to set me right. And he promised and said... I've abandoned my other kids at different points in my life, and I thank God, you know, that I'm back in their lives, but he's like, I will never leave Alex. We call him Penguino, you know, Penguin, and so, because he loves the Happy Feet movie when he was young, and so, um, yeah, he said, I'll never leave Penguino, and so it was so powerful to see that God actually put Alex in his life to give him, he, he calls it a second chance or whatever, but I look at it as a promise. Yeah, and so it's just beautiful to see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, and so I'm just so grateful because my dad you know, after that talk with him and after seeing, you know, the new son that he was fathering, that the Lord was slowly redeeming his life. He was redeeming his relationships with his family, with his kids. I had another promise and, you know, in 2014 when I saw that my dad had a chance to be restored to God and really see his life start to change, you know, I, I was so grateful for that, but I felt like the Lord said there's more. And so... Just last year, you know, as I was talking to one of my mentors and just a, a respected leader in my life, he told me that he actually led his, his father to know God and he baptized his dad. And when he said that, it just struck my heart, really hit me hard. And I cried and I thought, I want to baptize my dad. You know, I'm blessed and I've been overseas baptizing all these other people and stuff. But how cool would it be to baptize my dad? And so it started with that thought, and then it turned into even deeper than that. And the Lord said to me, you're not just going to baptize your dad, but when you do that, you're actually breaking something on your family. You are fulfilling a prophetic promise that was given to you, that this abandonment and rejection and, and, a, and, and a lack of fathership, all of that would be done away with and you'd be restored because when you baptize your dad and he comes out that water, he, you're seeing a new a father to his family. You're seeing a man that was fatherless, but now has fathership. He's so proud of you right now. This is a moment in history. I hope that before I leave, mm. that I can get to know Selena. Because <laughs> that's the one thing that's killing me right now. <laughs> You brought all my other ones back to me. And it's killed me. Every day. I'm 
I'm thankful for all my children. And I'm so glad that Sumi's back in my life. Because at least well, we have an extension to our family. My little babies. I love them more than life itself. I love my grandbabies. <laughs> Please help my brother. Mm. It's killing me to know that kid's suffering. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I miss him so much. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you can let it out. <laughs> I miss my brothers. I miss Amador so much. <laughs> That's why I always tell my kids, don't fight each other. <laughs> it sucks to be a grown man and just not know what's going on with my siblings. <laughs> and thank you, God, because I know so a good, good mom. That means the world to me. Boy, my babies are good. Thank you for looking after Christopher for all those years that I did. I'm done. <laughs> it's good to let stuff out, isn't it? Mm. It's been killing me. Let it out. You know, it's not, it's not your burden, it's not your fault. Like the Lord is. Working on everybody's heart one by one. We got this far, so we're not done yet, you know. So not I never, yet. ever thought this day would come where I have all my babies right here under the same roof. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm sorry for crying. This just feels so good to have you guys, all of you guys, especially the babies. So good. I'm sure you can keep going if you got more. I'm done, Benji, because all that matters to me until I leave is you guys. And through everything, everything that has happened. Every day I wake up knowing that you're good. Christopher's good. Sumi's on point, like, you guys, this was making me stay strong, knowing after all the years that I threw away on you guys, mm. it killed me. But I'm just grateful that each one of you guys allowed me back in your life, and it just, it means everything to me, it means everything. And that's why it kills me, man. If I don't see the penguin for one day, it kills me because I will not let that happen to him. He's like, all of you guys are all in him. I don't know if that sounds right, but. It makes sense. I see him, and I see Benji, and I see Sully, and I see Celine, and I see Christopher. And now I see my babies, and it's just, I can't do it. I won't do it. Alex, he needs to go poop. Yeah. Okay, let me poop, come on. Let's do this I quick. Cried, I Move up. Enough. Move all the way up as close as you can get to the very front, because we got to get your whole head in the water. So. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all don't know I'm doing? <laughs> all right, ready? Okay. So, uh, you ready to hold your breath? I'm going to say in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, and we just go in. Ready? Okay. So, we thank you, Lord. We bless his life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. All right. It is finished.